little background for the project, and then uh, on the prerequisites we had for the project, and some of the technology we have chosen for the project. And then uh, Morten is going to <laughs> talk more about the solution, and uh, we're going to pick out some of the challenges we have been, been having uh, with the project. And I'm going to show some slides uh, of the result, how this was ended up. So first of all, Forsmark. Uh, this is the Forsmark uh, Schaltrafeld. And this actually, I bought this, I, we were out in Berlin last year at the user conference, no, at the world tour in Berlin last summer. And we were out shopping and I saw this uh, deck of card games <laughs> and I saw this Atomkraftwerke Quartet uh, game. And so I bought it and there, there it was, Forsmark. Uh, so this is some quick fact about the power plant in German. So is there any Germans here? No. <laughs> so I'm not going to have any like check, checkings afterwards, but it, it's a, uh, it's a game, you know, you c when you were a child, you had with, with cats and planes and cars, which is the fastest, but this is with uh, oh, nuclear power plants. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it was built around 1980. And uh, actually it's uh, supporting about one sixth of uh, Sweden's electro electrical power use. So it's uh, quite uh, important for, for Sweden. Uh, actually, they had a, a, a voting in Sweden in the beginning of the 80s when uh, they had, in Sweden you can't have yes or no, uh, you have yes, no, and maybe, and maybe one. <laughs> so uh, there are, there's a quite big of uncertainty of uh, if the power plant is going to be, uh, still exist in like 10 years. But it's running. So uh, the Forsmark Power Group is a part of Vattenfall, a very big Swedish company. They have a lot of things doing in Germany and all of Europe. And uh, Forsmark Power Group, they only have the, the nuclear power plant in Forsmark. And uh, during last year, we made a prototype for them, uh, showing them how they could use their CAD and BIM data uh, in a web map platform. So we, we made this prototype and then they were showing it in-house and well, they liked it uh, quite a lot. So this year we have been doing a larger project, of course, with FME <laughs> and, uh, and it's uh, just soon to be finished and it's will going to be in production this autumn. Um, so the project, this was the prerequisites they want it fast, easy to use, of course, and uh, they wanted it integrated with existing systems. They have systems with all their drawings and all their, there's a, a lot of documentation on a power plant. Uh, and they also wanted both outdoor maps for doing analysis like flooding after the, uh, the accident in Japan uh, for a couple of years ago. And, but it as well wanted indoor maps so they could connect the data with the rooms and with things inside rooms. Um, and they always wanted updated data, so the freshest data was very important. And of course, they wanted to integrate the security with their active directory. It's like a, a database of users from Microsoft. So you, you, have, um, you have a very strict policy who can see what. You cannot see everything at the power plant. Uh, so this was one of the challenges I will talk more about later. Uh, so when it comes to the technology, uh, we have chosen to make a custom-made solution with GeoServer as a map engine. And uh, like it's, a, it's a web, web page you, you surf into with your browser. And they had Oracle already, so we, we that was one of the Ah, we had to adapt to, uh, to the Oracle. And then we choose uh, FME Desktop and FME Server for integrating and updating all the data they are, uh, that are going to be used in the system. And it's uh, both spatial data and tabular data or non-spatial data. Um, and the outer data we are quite familiar with. We use uh, 
it's mostly AutoCAD drawings uh, of outdoor and some shape files with uh, some areas. Uh, but indoor, we had a more we had to think a little more because they have quite an old um, uh, version of AutoCAD. So, but they are thinking about maybe uh, do using Revit in the future. So they wanted us to design a solution that would uh, work now and work later. Uh, so we use the EFC format. It's a industry foundation classes. If anybody knows, it's a standard for it changing like BIM data. Uh, and we have designed the workspaces so we read the IFC files uh, instead of using the new Revit integration in uh, the FME uh, integration in Revit. Uh, and that makes it possible for us to use both Autodesk architecture format, doing the export to EFC there, and also the Revit uh, where you also can export to IFC. Uh, and then we have, because we wanted to, uh, when you're doing the, the imports uh, with FME, you also want to be able to, to set the security on the, what data you're importing, who can see what. You want to do it directly. You can't, because it, there's too much w manual work if you are going to import the data and then sit and set, uh, read in your Active Directory, okay, who can see this and, and see if it's the same. So, so you choose, like from a parameter, you choose which uh, a Active Directory group has the rights to see this and you pass it on when you're doing the translation. And in that way, we also get the security settings in the web application. And uh, also, with the Python caller we use for uh, building layers that doesn't uh, exist. So it looks, does the layer exist in your server? If not, then the script does the work and make it happen. So it's a quite uh, streamlined uh, a workspace. So now Morten is going more into the, the solution. So let's talk a little bit more about the details and the geeky stuff in this. Um, this is the big picture of the of the data data flow or uh, yeah how is how it looks uh, as in data. We have IFC the export that Anton talked about from AutoCAD architecture, and we have. Um, normal GBG files, <laughs> and we also have some Excel files with data from, from uh, other systems in the, in the uh, at Forsmark. And we have FME, of course, in the middle as, a, as the, the working force here. Um, and we write everything to, to Oracle Spatial and, and Oracle yeah, Tabular tables. Um, and we, one, one thing, Oh yeah, um, the first challenge, so to speak, uh, was to get hold of this IFC export. When you, when you take that into FME, it's, it's quite uh, complex uh, at the beginning. So this is the, yeah, as somebody said yesterday, the, the uh, obligatory <laughs> picture of my very big <laughs> workspace. But we're going to look at, at two parts of, the parts of this, and we start with the IFC reader part first. <laughs> uh, as I said, the, the, the model for, for the, the data IFC export data model is, is a little bit complex uh, when you see it first, at least. Um, you get 26 feature types in FME when you just pull a, an IFC export in there. So we first had to get to know it and see how to connect everything to get get objects out of it so we can <coughs> later store it in a database. Um, there were some things we learned on the way that uh, the, the geometry uh, at the top left is connected to the, to the IFC space object. That is uh, something that FME helps you with or, or connects automatically. Uh, it's not, uh, yeah, the definition of the model is not, uh, then it's not, uh, the geometry is not actually in that object. Um, yeah, so we had to, to get to know this uh, model and uh, we had uh, actually of this, these 26 feature types we used four 
of the ones we needed. Um, some internal ones uh, with some yeah the, the uh, with attributes and uh, the, the the bottom left one uh, attributes that is from internal from the IOC model, and then we had two <coughs> two feature types in the middle that is defined by by Foschmark. That is, yeah, the, the the attributes they need to to keep this model. Uh, yeah, and, but we we found a way to connect it and uh, then uh, stored it in the database uh, to the right. Uh, the other one of the oh, the other challenge uh, was uh, when we were going to write this to the to Oracle. Um, one prerequisite was that we we had to. Uh, both use Forschmark's old uh, local coordinate system and also store data, uh, the geometry in the Swedish national coordinate system, Svere. So we had some, th some thinking being done <laughs> about this uh, and came to the conclusion that the best solution was to store the geometry in, in two different tables. So for each types of type of objects we we store the geometry as in the local coordinate system and, and in another table with the, the national coordinate system. Uh, and then we have the, all the attribute information of the objects uh, stored in, a, in, an, in another table. But so uh, there was a challenge in this to, because we had to connect these tables somehow. We had to have an, a key attribute to, to know which geometry uh, object was connected to the which attribute objects. Uh, so first we thought about using uh, the, the trigger in the database, Oracle's database, uh, to just count the ID attribute that we were gonna connect these three tables with. But the performance was to, the, the, the question being posted to the database took too long time, so we couldn't do that once for every feature because it, yeah. It, then the, the workspace would, would run uh, for too long. Uh, so we, we built this. Um, so this is kind of a, a combination of, 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 of different, different things, uh, different <coughs> qualities, so to speak. Um, when a feature comes from the, the, the export, the IFC export, it, it gets cleaned and, and uh, Fixed uh, before it comes to this part, but when it's when it's ready to be uh, loaded into the database, uh, it comes here. And in the first in the sampler, I pick out the first the first feature and send that to the SQL executor. And uh, this is where we thought that we could send every feature to this SQL executor to get the the ID from the database and then just split it up in three, three writers at the end, but this, this, this was where the performance was too low. So the first feature calls the trigger in the database to get the ID, the next value on, on the, the key attribute. Um, when it has got that, it, it's being set in a, in a variable uh, that all the other features that goes in the bottom of this uh, part of the workspace uh, waits for here, I have a feature holder to make sure that the variable is set before I, I call it in the next step. And there you see I, I split, split the data flow. So first all the features, or no, the features goes up to the variable retriever and find this ID attribute that I, the ID value that I got from the database at the, from the SQL executor. And then I use the value that I got from the trigger in the database to start my counter. Uh, so in this way, this, there's a little little error here. There should be plus one, not minus one, in the in the in the text there. Um, so so here I start at counting at the va value I got from the database. Um, so for every feature that comes by, I I count one, and and uh, yeah, counts. Uh, Use no, I <laughs> I count up the value of the ID, so to speak, and then I split up the flow to so it gets reprojected to the to the 
national coordinate system and also stored at the bottom one as in the original local coordinate system. And also uh, this flow uh, on the bottom is uh, the attribute values. The, the, two bot the two top ones is the geometry tables. Um, but it, with the attribute, val attribute table, I let the database keep up counting this, uh, the ID attribute automatically. So I, yeah, that's the same trigger that I called earlier in the, in the <coughs> SQL executor. Um, so <coughs> by this I get uh, an ID attribute that I can, so I can connect the, the objects later on uh, that is in phase because I, uh, yeah, because I use plus one, not minus one, as I say in the middle there. Um, so that was, uh, uh, yeah, I think this is a, an example of, of, of a good way to use both, both uh, the strength of, of FME in this case, uh, but also use the, the, the qualities in, in external uh, features like the, the trigger in the database. Uh, we, we, yeah, we combine strength from different, different uh, solutions. So it was, yeah, in the end, we made it work. Thanks. So uh, as Morten told us here, the, the biggest challenges here was the local coordinate system that is not so well defined. So we really had to knock our heads in the wall, what you say. And uh, this IFC file, we had to take some help from some colleagues only working with IFC exports in other projects. And of course, the high security at the power plant was, it was and is a really challenge because we are not allowed to, to install anything at their computers or servers. So we have to write the documentation is like for a three-year-old or something. <laughs> they have to be perfect. And they are really picky about, OK, it doesn't work. Get it back and do it all over again. Uh, and of course, we can't test in their, their system, so we, we, we try to, to have a, a similar server at, at in-house, uh, but it's, it's a really, really tough. It's really like <laughs> working with a blind post sometimes. Yeah, yeah. So um, <coughs> hopefully uh, we will be able to make this project uh, grow uh, further and use FME in wider things than just the, the things we're doing now. Uh, and I'm going to show you just quickly how, how the system looks like when, it, when it's imported in the database. So this is the power plant. I cannot show you inside of the, because it's so secret, but <laughs> you can see this. This is the Forsmark one and two, uh, two and three there. So, and um, when you zoom in, this is like a clean interface. You use it both in the web browser and also possible to use it in your iPhone or iPad or other device, Android, to use it mobile. They don't have Wi-Fi there yet, but hopefully, maybe 10 years or so. Uh, and when you zoom in, you get the indoor maps. And when you zoom in even more, you can see like the room numbers and you can click, click on the, the rooms to get the information imported with the FME from all kind of systems. Uh, so uh, I would say that's about it. So thank you. Do you have any questions? <laughs> any questions? You have any questions? No, I'm not going to. Yeah, I've got a couple of questions. Yeah. Um, one was uh, the difficulty of synchronizing your space, your spatial tables to geometry tables. But why? What was the reason for not just using multiple spatial columns in the one table? Uh, yeah, because uh, th the, there is no definition of this local coordinate system, and it's non, uh, not, uh, not so well defined. So you can't, we couldn't make any definition for it. Uh, okay. So it's like an arbitrary x y meter s coordinate system. So we have to store it uh, in an own, like an own, and you can't have two coordinate yeah. uh, geometry columns in the same table. Yeah, 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 thank you. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, and it, uh, it also was a, 
like a performance thing because in the in the application they want to be able to choose which coordinate system they are looking at. So if they want when they have the the they call it TU, which is like TU something. Uh, it's uh, rotated so it's aligned with the reactors. Oh. North is is uh, down somewhere. <laughs> So, so it's both both the possibility in Oracle or not possible possibility in Oracle and also a performance issue. We tried to make views uh, inside of Oracle, but now we have the the views in GeoServer instead. For the, uh, <coughs> the ID that you look at using, the, I actually a lot of times have a global unique ID in the object. Uh, no, and no, we didn't use the, the global ID because they have, I don't know exactly how the ID looks, uh, but we because we didn't only use IFC files, so we had to make a solution where that was going to work for both IFC and also like flat GVG files because we're doing the same thing with every everything that has a geometry in it. So it could have been possible with doing what you say, but. I think we want to make it uh, last because we don't know everything at the power plant. If you go there, they have like this, it feels like going to lost, like time machine. <laughs> so, and it feels like when you're now I implementing FME, they will probably have this version uh, 2014 service pack two, they will have it in like 10 years yeah. forward. So, <laughs> so you have to make a, a solution that's really solid. Yeah. Is there a possibility to use sort of a real-time geometry transformation instead of hashing it in two tables? No, because of it's not so uh, how, like it's not it's very poor the the other coordinate system. So we didn't uh, get uh, a good uh, like would you say transformation mm -hmm. the, the transformation. <laughs> yeah, the, we didn't have the ra the right parameters to do a, a good transformation. So. Now it's a. The far further away you get from from Origo, or zero zero coordinate, it, the, the less accurate it gets. Yeah. So it's. Uh, it's really accurate just around the reactors, and then it's really really bad. So it's more more kind of a, but it but it's not only a like a, a rotation and a uh, offset. It's also some kind of strange scale factor that's not the same everywhere so it's ah, it was hard we tried to do it uh, a little too much I think <laughs> so, I mean, you just meant that you did the transformation right in caching the table yes so I mean you can as easily have like a trigger on demand that does a transformation yeah we could have done it in, in Oracle instead but we, we tried that as well but we had the because uh, they have another um, it's called SKB which are uh, the ones who are in charge of where the nuclear waste goes. And they already had, so we got uh, the transformer with the transformation, uh, it was already done. So we just picked it and put it in. Otherwise we would have been writing it all over again. And uh, if we were not so sure how to do it. We know how to do it in FME, but Oracle was not our, what do you say, strong suit or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're not at the Oracle conference. <laughs> <laughs> so it sounds like they already had an Oracle database. Is that why you? Yeah. Did? Okay. They use Oracle, so it was. Uh, were they able to provide you with their schema, or was this like a completely separate? Uh, no, we we could do our own schema, but you had to like really go into. We just send them SQL scripts, and they see if okay, is this what did this do? We had to be able to answer anything in the schema and. Uh, so were they, were they trying to tie this to other systems that they had with Oracle? Is that what some of their requirements Yeah, are yeah. They are, they are, but right now they're mo mainly importing data to this new software, like the GS software we are developing. So in the future, maybe there will be c connections on the other direction. Maybe a, like a, a what do you say, clip, zip, and chip function, and uh, opening geometries, showing maps inside of other 
So it's uh, it's quite a it's not so advanced the system we have built, but it's really uh, advanced the like the the rules we have to yeah, <laughs> yeah. Very constrained kind of yeah it's very constrained yeah. so not rocket science it's <laughs> nuclear science yeah <laughs> <laughs> any other questions.